Why should you do poetry in your homeschool and how can you do it? This is my beginner's guide to using poetry in your homeschool. Hi, I'm Jenny with Kids Learning for Life and I've basically been doing poetry with my kids since day one of homeschooling. Maybe not day one, but we've been doing it since my oldest daughter was in kindergarten. I know sometimes poetry can kind of scare people who typically just read books that are written in prose instead of verse or maybe don't even read much at all, but I'm here to share some tips on how you can make poetry fun and easy in your homeschool. First off, why do poetry? Without having done very much research on this, the bottom line for me is that it's fun. Good poetry can make words that you've heard many, many times before take on a new beautiful meaning. A good poet can paint such a vivid picture just with words that you can almost feel like you're right there observing it with them. And I know that the idea of studying poetry might seem a little random or not connected to other subjects in your homeschool, but I promise you it does relate. Poetry is music, poetry is language arts, poetry can even be mathematical in nature. What separates poetry from the standard prose that you would read in a normal storybook is that there is a rhythm and meter to it, unlike the sentence that I'm even saying right now. It requires a certain amount of syllables, words, and lines to create that rhythm. Plus, poetry is all about patterns. If you're reading a poem that consistently rhymes, then you can almost predict where it's gonna go or how a certain sentence in the poem is going to end. So yes, there's definitely a sort of math in poetry and you cannot change my mind on that one. So in a nutshell, yes. Studying poetry is exercising more muscles than just the language arts one. Now to get started, you can start poetry at really any age. You can even start with toddlers. Something that you may already do that you haven't even noticed is doing like nursery rhymes with your kids. Mother Goose nursery rhymes are great examples of poetry that you might already be aware of. And there are so many different versions of like Mother Goose nursery rhymes anthologies. So I will link to a particularly cute one below. Humpty Dumpty. Ba Ba Black Sheep, Jack and Jill. These are all poems that you can easily recite with your toddlers and maybe even they can memorize and recite on their own. My youngest daughter is just a toddler and she's a little more speech delayed than my other two girls were at her age, but she loves doing patty cake with us. So we'll do that over and over again. And sometimes it's like the easiest way to get her to kind of start verbalizing and making different sounds that she is kind of uncomfortable with making. By the way, did you know that patty cake is actually pronounced pat a cake? Like not patty, but pat a cake. I'm gonna continue saying patty personally because I'm just stubborn, but I was just curious if any of you guys knew that or if I'm late to the game. And for your school-aged children, there is so much poetry out there that you can appreciate together. Our personal favorite is this book right here, A Child's Garden of Verses by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is a great collection of poems they are mostly pretty short, so this has been something that my kids have gravitated towards reading independently. I mean, some of these poems were some of the first things that they kind of picked up and read on their own and were able to build confidence from that. So, and this book is also just extremely beautiful. There are a lot of different versions, but I will link to this exact version in the description below. Now we follow the Ambleside Online schedule and for this upcoming school year, we will be doing more poetry anthologies by different poets, one of which is Walter de la Mer. I don't personally have a lot of experience with reading from this poet, but I have heard about him on The Well-Read Poem, which is another great resource if you want to incorporate poetry super easily in your daily life. I highly recommend using The Well-Read Poem as a resource in your homeschool. And it's really fun to listen to this with your kids because all of you guys are learning about these different poems and these different poets together. Each episode is really short and it's hosted by a fellow poet, Thomas Banks. And he reads a poem, kind of explains a little bit about it, maybe the background, maybe about the meter or the tone or the words used. And it's just such a gem to have in a homeschool setting. So I recommend you check that out. That will also be linked below. I'm also gonna link below to the Ambleside Online poetry schedule. Um, the link will take you to a page where it kind of shows an overview of which poets to introduce to your kids at what ages. So that also has been really helpful to me. So that will be in the description. You can also use poetry in your homeschool to help teach writing skills. I've quite often used lines from poetry chosen by me or by my kids as copywork. And this can be a really great way to make copywork a little more fun, a little less stale. 
You can also work on rhyming skills and have your kids create poetry of their own. Many kids will kind of volunteer to create poetry of their own once you start reading poetry consistently to them. And I just love seeing this spark of creativity in my kids and it's just so easy for them to do. I mean, rhyming is one of the first language arts skills that kids learn, right? So it's really fun to see them be inspired by what you're reading them and have them want to create as well. And if your kids are still too young to write on their own, you can write the poems down for them and maybe even have them like memorize and recite them for friends and family members. So those are just a few ideas for how to inspire them to create their own poetry. And of course, you can always do poetry recitation in your homeschool. This can be as formal or as informal as you want and it really doesn't have to be complicated. My kids have always kind of loved having that challenge of recitation and memorization in our homeschool, so it's kind of a special treat for them. Reciting poetry, even in a home setting, can help build up their public speaking skills and help them build confidence in that area. And it can also teach them how to dictate clearly and speak clearly and loudly for an audience to hear. Last year, my kids were in their first play and I am convinced that all of the poetry memorization and recitation that we've done in homeschool really helped prepare them for memorizing lines and delivering them in front of an audience. And I was so proud of how they did in the plays because I really do attribute that, a lot of that, to the fact that we've been doing poetry this whole time and they're really comfortable with memori memorizing, you know, long lines of poetry. And when you're having your kids start out memorizing poetry, you really only need to start with maybe one or two lines of poetry at a time. It really doesn't need to be complicated or overwhelming to them. And then slowly you can build up the length of the poems, you know, as they grow more confident. And to dedicate more time in your homeschool to poetry, you can always do something fun like poetry tea time. This is quite simply in a nutshell, a way for you and your kids to enjoy poetry together over a snack and maybe even a warm cup of tea. This doesn't need to be complicated or stressful. It's purely just fun, relaxing time. And I go over how to do poetry tea time in detail in a past video that I did. So I will link to that right over here for you. See you next time and happy homeschooling.